Hello, everybody, and welcome to this video where this is the first time I've talked today. So I just realized how um, froggy my throat is sounding. So we're today. There we go. And this week, actually, um, I'm going to be making a series of videos that are basically talking about the problems I see most in people's work. This is my opinion. You can take this with a grain of salt and continue to write however the fuck you want to write. I'm talking about this because between people just sending me their work just to share their work with me, between people like submitting for the blood rag or taking like the Anarchy Crew course, the Poetic Anarchy course, and um, turning in assignments and stuff like that. And then just like seeing people post stuff on Instagram and shit. There are a lot of things I see people doing all the time. Even if you stop doing these things just for a week, just to see what happens, it will be beneficial to you. Okay, you don't have to like do this so I can read it. Like, it's fine, I don't care. Like, do whatever you want. These are just problems I see so many people make that it's, I don't know, it's almost like a sickness. Like, somebody catches a cold and passes it on to the next poet and it just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. And then honestly, if you like what you're doing, fucking keep doing what you're doing. Like, who fucking gives a shit? If you like it and you're enjoying yourself, then fucking do whatever the fuck you're doing. Who cares? It's not a big deal. So, the first thing we are going to talk about this time in this video, something that I have said the exact opposite at at one point or another, and I will post that, like, right here somewhere. I say... Or I said, cliche more. I still think the idea of that video is still valid. But now, for everybody else, and go watch that video if you haven't watched it yet. But definitely cliche less. Definitely cliche less. Now, the problem here is, is that I don't think people know what cliches are. So... This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna Google cliches. Top 10 cliches. Wow, I am definitely full of cliches. <laughs> oh shit, oh shit. Okay, okay, so you guys ready for this? Okay, so here we go, here we go, here we go. So, think outside the box. It is what it is. At the end of the day, Low-hanging fruit, read between the lines, cat got your tongue, can of worms, kiss and make up, time flies, play your cards right, it's an uphill battle, better safe than sorry, you can't judge a book by its cover, um, bring to the table, the grass is always greener on the other side. I guess where I was coming from with this, with your metaphors. If your metaphors are cliche as fuck, oh, this was white as snow, or um, black as night, or as beautiful as an angel, whatever. I don't know. Basically, the, the, the rule of thumb, which again is a fucking cliche, is if you think you've heard it before, don't use it. And that is going to really fuck with a lot of you. And in that last video, I said, who fucking gives a shit? Use it. Because it'll be someone's first time hearing it. I still stand by that. But what I have seen lately from a lot of people sending me stuff lately, it's just like cliche after cliche after cliche after cliche. Like line, line, line. Like how many lines are in the poem? How many cliches are in the poem? the number will be equal. Like, the thing that sucks is that I feel like the people who rely on the things that I'm going to be talking about this week really don't have anything to write about. So they want to write, so they're like, okay, I'm going to write something today, so I'll just write this thing. And they just, like, cliche the fuck out of themselves, 
and then like do what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. Then at the end of the day, they're like, now I have a poem. And it's like, yes, if you want to put a poem in a Hallmark card. So how do you say nothing at all using as many words as possible and like just like slap it on something? I don't, I don't know. Like just think about what you're writing. Okay, it shouldn't be pulling teeth, cliche. It shouldn't be something that you struggle with, but it also, this is where a lot of people are gonna like argue with me. Your writing should come easy to you. It should come naturally to you. But if the things that are coming naturally and easy to you are a bunch of worn out cliches and what we're gonna be talking about tomorrow, vague metaphors, um, you're not doing anything. You are basically like matching colors. Like you're going, oh, these socks go with these shorts, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, this top goes with this brooch. I don't fucking know. But it, it's like you're just like, mm, eh, huh. Like, yeah, anybody could do it. People have... Fridge magnets that are a bunch of words, and you can put them in order and go do 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 do. Oh, I made a poem. Okay, yes, you can do that. Does that poem mean anything? Sometimes, most of the time, not. What's the word flarf? It was like this. Here, let me just look it up so I could just tell you guys what it was. Okay, so flarf poetry. A lot of you might actually like this and want to get into this, but known for its reliance on Google as a means of generating odd juxtapositions, surfaces, and grammatical inaccuracies. Flarf also celebrates deliberately bad or incorrect poetry by forcing cliches, swear words, onomatopoeia, and other linguistic arborations into poetic shape. So there you go. That might be something you guys are into because um, it seems like that's what some of the stuff is that you're sending to me. And I think the problem is, is if you're sending the stuff out to magazines and websites and you are just getting rejected over and over and over again, it's because of these two things guaranteed these are going to be the first two things that are the problem that you rely on overused cliches and tomorrow's video just a wall of metaphor that doesn't say anything like people could look at that as ai poetry the reason why i say it like this is because if you read your poem and after you read your poem you say, oh shit, that's kind of vague. That doesn't really say anything. It, first off, if you say that, the self-awareness you have is amazing, and I applaud you. But you have to be able to look at your poem and understand that it has said something. Like, if you give this poem to a beta reader, like or a good friend, or whatever, and you ask them, what does this poem say? And they read that poem and they can't answer it. You fucked up. And I know there's some like weirdos out there that are like, oh, I really like super vague poems because then like, you know, everyone could get their own interpretation out of it and, you know, like be something this and it's like just totally different. Okay? That's fucking lazy. Like... If you don't have anything to say, don't fucking write. Just fucking read shit and watch fucking Wheel of Fortune or something. But if you have something to say, fucking say it. Like, let this be your wake-up call. Do you have something to say? If so, say it. If not, do something else until you have something to say. With a flarf and AI poetry... Like, there is too much stuff out there that already doesn't say anything. So why add to that? Be a light in a dark room.
<laughs> cliches, cliche, cliche. So I don't know, this, I, I feel like this was a bit much, but I think you guys understand what I'm saying. If you're gonna use a cliche, a very simple cliche that everyone's gonna know, only do that once in your poem. Don't do that on every line. And that's fine to do, especially because again, that's gonna be the first time somebody hears it. So I'm fine with that. But if every fucking line of your poem is like some cliche that everyone's heard before, yeah, like that's that's not gonna fly. Like that's not gonna get accepted places. I don't even know. Yeah, it's just, it's it looks amateurish. It looks weak. Go over to Etsy and pick up my book. It's over there, fucking, I don't know. Okay, join the Anarchy Crew this Friday, actually. This is the third Friday of April. So this Friday, we're doing the Anarchy Crew Zoom, where we're gonna do the writing workshop and read back and forth and all this other shit. So, tab art, everybody. Um, cliche less, please. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.